Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Norway. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you at the conference today, so instead I've invited you to visit me uh, where I work. Uh, we're going to talk about economic development and the lack of it. Uh, and the story begins, uh, in my case, uh, when I was 18 years old, uh, on top of the biggest garbage dump in Lima, Peru. Uh, I was asking myself the question, why is it that the people I've served in Lima uh, the people who handle the luggage at the airport, the taxi driver, the bus driver, the barber, the people in the restaurants, were all equally efficient as those in Norway, but they were infinitely much poorer. So the question that popped in my, up, uh, up in my mind was, what is it with a market that rewards people with equal efficiency so differently in different nations on the globe? I thought that when I got back to Norway, I should look this up and find an explanation. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't find an explanation. Forty years after my first encounter with underdevelopment, this book was published. Twenty of those years I spent in business making a living out of free trade. So I'm not against free trade. Uh, but I think 500 years of experience shows us that the timing of free trade is very important. If the timing is not perfect, then it's possible for nations to specialize in a comparative advantage in being poor and ignorant. Well, as you can imagine, uh, living here gives a certain distance to day-to-day -day problems. And when I started looking for development theories, I also found that distance in time could help. Economic theory has not always been as it is today. And particularly, uh, it's important that all nations that are presently rich for a while had a completely different theory. So in order to find historical support I started uh, collecting old economics books and books on economic history and 40 years and 60,000 volumes later uh, I know a bit more about what made poor countries rich. The basic question we are facing, and the question we are not very good at answering at the moment, is reflected in this chart. Until the year I visited the garbage dump in Lima, Peru, Somalia was a richer country than Korea. We see from the graph how Korea suddenly took off, and Korea took off because it changed its comparative advantage from a diminishing return activity to an increasing return activity from producing rice to manufacturing. The dilemma we have today is the obvious gap that we see in the graph between the rich countries and the poor countries. Why do we have two convergent groups, a rich one and a poor one, and why is it so difficult to be in the middle? Why is it so difficult to produce middle income countries? This is what I'll try to address in this video. The book collection grew from a start of trying to understand poor countries by un understanding their economies. Um, I started with the South American countries that I uh, knew best, but I soon found out that the poor countries' reality really responded pretty well to economic theory. They had perfect competition and they had diminishing returns just like Ricardian trade theory assumes. When I started looking at the history of rich nations, they all showed the same pattern. They had a prolonged period of protecting and nourishing manufacturing industries with increasing returns. Um, and the more I looked, uh, the more surprising the pattern was. No nation had ever got rich without going through this period of protection of increasing returns and technical change. Um, the more famous theoreticians are Friedrich List, the German, and Alexander Hamilton, the American. Um, but there are also uh, theorists in virtually all other countries, uh, in Italy, in 
Germany, in Spain, all over the nations uh, that in different periods of time took the step from poor to rich. This little pamphlet uh, shows uh, the two sides of the debate on the same page. Alexander Hamilton uh, was the person who uh, you can actually ask today, why Mr. Hamilton is it that you think that the United States needs a manufacturing industry? And he will give you a long list of arguments. Uh, Hamilton's uh, opponent in this kind of theory was Thomas Jefferson. Uh, these two kind of policies met in the United States. Hamilton created the first central bank in the United States. Jefferson managed to get it closed. Hamilton was killed in a duel uh, with Jefferson's vice president. <clears throat> we find today, by looking at the history of US industrial policy, that there is a Jeffersonian rhetoric, but behind the Jeffersonian rhetoric, there is very much Hamiltonian policy. In American iconography, however, it's clear who won the battle. It was Hamilton who conquered the $10 bill, whereas Jefferson was delegated to the $2 bill, which never circulates. So we can say that the United States is uh, perhaps the most interesting prototype for how to get rich. Uh, rags to riches theory uh, that can be applied also today in poor countries. Because the mechanisms over history are the same. Increasing returns, the fact that costs go down as the volume of production goes up, um, was, has the same effect in Venice in the 1500s as it has in Silicon Valley today. Uh, imperfect competition uh, that people get rich by being in industries with high barriers to entry are still the same. Uh, new technology brings higher wages and higher tax incomes. That was understood fully by European ministers of finance in the 18th century and the fact is still valid today. So the mechanisms are the same but the contexts are different. So the, the problem becomes how, do we, how does one apply the old principles to the new contexts? And this is the challenge of economic policy. The Northern European welfare states are an example that many poor countries want to follow. The welfare state was a project to solve what in Europe in the 19th century was called the social question. The social question was all the misery that industrialization had created. So the welfare state was a project to tame industrialization and a welfare state without manufacturing industry was never contempl contemplated. 